Reflections from Torch Trust, focusing on Christian faith and sight loss. Hello and welcome to Reflections, the show from Torch Trust that focuses on faith and disability in today's world. I'm your host, Marilyn Baker, and I'll be with you for the next half hour. Well, we've reached the last Sunday in Advent. What does that mean? What is the countdown for anyway? Well, I'm sure many of you know, but it's worth revisiting the meaning of Advent because it symbolises the greatest visitation our world has ever known. Such an incredible, mind-blowing event, we can hardly comprehend the magnitude of it or what it signifies for all of us. Let's try and think it through. The one who created numerous galaxies beyond our thinking who, as the songwriter Graham Kendrick put it, flung stars into space, came to our world, his glory veiled. He came as a helpless babe. Unnoticed by nearly everyone, except a few individuals who were expecting him because they'd either been pre-warned by God or who were prayerfully looking for the signs of the promised Messiah. Although he was the creator of all things, he came amongst us so very humbly. Listen to these poignant words from St. John's Gospel. He was with God and he was God. He was in the beginning with God. He created everything there is. Nothing exists that he didn't make. But although the world was made through him, the world didn't recognize him when he came. Even in his own land and amongst his own people, he was not accepted. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. Let's hear part of an old hymn. I recorded it on my Christmas album, which is available on iTunes, by the way. Thou who wast rich. Thou who wast rich beyond all splendor.
So God himself became a human being, coming into the busyness, the squalor, the everyday life of this world. He wasn't coming as a ruler to lord it over everyone. He was coming as a servant, to give and to care and to fully identify with us in our joys, our sorrows, experiencing pain and rejection and all the struggles of our human existence. He was so unbelievably hands-on too, nothing remote or unfeeling about him. His closest friends were very ordinary people just like you and me. He came to bring hope and help to all. His message was one of reconciliation, of total forgiveness and a new beginning for everyone who would accept it, showing us beyond any doubt that God is for us, not against us, and that he desires above everything else a close and loving relationship with each of us, and a promise that he will be alongside us at all times, so that we can walk through life hand in hand with our Creator. What a privilege! He longs for this close relationship with us, but he will never force it on us. We have to choose to know him like this. The name that was given to him by the prophet Isaiah before he was conceived was Emmanuel, meaning God with us. And the amazing thing about this relationship is that it is eternal. Everything in this life comes and goes, doesn't it? But he tells us that this life is only the beginning of something far more wonderful than our hearts and minds can possibly imagine. And he promises that as we trust him, he will make sure we get there. Listen to part of another song from my Christmas album. You may like to sing along with it as well. Mary's Boy Child. Long time ago in Bethlehem So the Holy Bible say Mary's boy child Jesus Christ Was born on Christmas Day Hark now hear Now we're going to listen to an extract of a book about Advent that we have in the Torch Library called His Name is Wonderful. This part is from Chapter 24. Week 4, Worship and Waiting Songs of Praise Give praise to the Lord, proclaim His name, make known among the nations what He has done, and proclaim that His name is exalted. 
Sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel among you. Isaiah chapter 12, verses 4 to 6. As we welcome Christ's coming into the world, we must bring to him our gifts of praise and thanksgiving. Sounds of joy and happiness are fitting at this time of year, and especially so when they are directed towards God in worship. For God has done glorious things, taking on himself the form of man, born as a baby in Bethlehem, that he might become our Saviour. Isaiah sees the manifestation of God's presence as cause to shout and sing for joy. The presence of God brings an exuberance into our worship. Christ has come. God is really among us. Let's get excited. After all, births are joyous occasions. Tomorrow, many of us will celebrate by giving presents, perhaps eating a little too much, and by spending time with family. Even those who are working on the big day will find some time for this over the Christmas season. But what of today? Let's make it a day to shout and sing our praises, for Jesus our King has come, and great is the Holy One of Israel among us. The Prayer Lord, as Isaiah praised you for the good news of Christ and the great things you have done, so we would praise you at this Christmas season for bringing your only Son Jesus into the world to save us from our sins. Hallelujah. Amen. Will we make room for him in our homes this Christmas? As we think about the possibilities of the new year ahead of us, let's try to make more space for him, more time for true reflection on the things that matter most. Now I'd like to share an Advent thought for the week with you. This time Ian Lackey has been thinking about John the Baptist. One of the great characters we consider, particularly at this Advent season of the year, is John the Baptist. His story is an interesting one. His birth to the old priestly couple Zachariah and Elizabeth was announced by an angel. He grew up to be a man who would brook no compromise as he called people to repentance. No one was spared the radical demands of this repentance call whether it be priest, tax collector, Pharisee, or even the king himself, repentance was something which needed to be worked out in practical living. He held himself to a high standard and expected others to do the same, yet he knew that he was but a servant, and his task was to prepare the way for the one who was to come, who would be so much greater than himself that no matter how great a prophet John was, he would be unworthy to untie the sandals of the Messiah who was to come after him. One day, the Messiah did indeed come, and John knew it. What was his reaction? Did he seek to cling on to the power and influence he had? Rather, he knew his work was done. He must decrease, while the Messiah, the Jesus, who's coming into the world we celebrate at Advent and Christmas, must increase. When we consider our lives as believers, this is the case in two ways. When it comes to influencing others, it is not us that we want them to follow, it is Jesus. It might be granted to us the great joy of leading others to Christ. However, it is Jesus we should want to see growing in these lives. God grants us the grace to touch. In the case of our own lives, it is the life of Jesus we want others to see in us. The Apostle Paul puts this very graphically when he says in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. As this Advent season moves inexorably towards Christmas, may our prayer be that the life of Christ increases in us as we grow to know him more. May others see more and more of Jesus in us.
as we seek to follow him day by day. I'd like to share another reading with you now. This is from a book titled Sharing the Christmas Story, which Torch is producing this year in Braille, large print and audio for people with sight loss. If you'd like a copy, please contact us on 01858 438 260 or email info at torchtrust.org. The book features a reflection for every day of the Advent and Christmas seasons, so let's listen in to an extract from today's reading. Elizabeth sees her young cousin Mary approaching and she realises Mary is pregnant and unmarried. Whatever troubles Elizabeth is facing must pale into the insignificance beside hers. But the child in her womb has no such anxieties. He leaps in her womb, and Elizabeth is filled with the Holy Spirit. Two cousins, two dear friends meet. Both are facing challenging circumstances, but both are sure that their situations have come about because of God's actions in their lives. And they have sworn to stay faithful to him and obedient to his purposes. Elizabeth's greeting to Mary is full of joy and love. And Mary's response is that wonderful poem of faith in a new world. In the coming months, the women will keep each other company and their sons will journey together to transform the world. True friends are rare and precious, friends who can share their experiences of God, perhaps even more so. I first met Julie when my second child was three months old. Her daughter was the same age, and we met in the creche of a women's prayer group. Our friendship developed. We babysat each other's children, even as our families increased. We started a pram service together to teach our children and others the songs and stories of the Christian faith. We competed as to whose child behaved the worst in Sunday school. About equal, actually. We trained for ministry together and were ordained a year apart. Julie's ministry took her to Hereford, mine to Berkshire, then Oxfordshire. But we keep in touch, sharing and occasionally puzzling over what God is doing in our lives, what we are doing in our churches and how we can continue to thrive in all areas of our lives. I thank God for Julie. Those of you who have a friend with whom you can talk about faith, as well as other matters, are blessed indeed. Not every friend needs to be a live human being, however. We can take comfort and draw support from writers, musicians and artists, alive or dead, who share our faith, deepening it and challenging it through their words or pictures. And of course, our heart's companion is one who is with us always, journeying alongside us, offering constant, unconditional love and showing us the way to eternal life. We're almost out of time this week, but just before we go, I'd like to share a short part of the Christmas story with you. This is taken from David Suchet's recording of the NIV Bible. And if you've not finished your Christmas gift buying, this Bible makes a lovely present. You can buy the accessible Mega Voice or Daisy audio version directly from Torch Trust. Standard print versions are out in bookshops and online now. This extract is from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants for ever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. 
The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. to imagine how Mary felt when speaking with that angel. The fear, the wonder, the anticipation. And as we wait in anticipation for this Christmas, I pray it will bring you peace, wonder and joy. We'll be back with you on Christmas Day with our special hour-long reflections episode. That will be on at 9am and again at 6pm on RNIB Connect Radio. Our festive Christmas show will feature a very special retelling of the Nativity, written and performed by blind people, along with plenty of music, readings and more. We do hope that you'll tune in. Remember, we're on RNIB Connect Radio on Christmas Day at 9am and again at 6pm. You'll also be able to listen to a podcast version of the show after it's aired on all the usual podcast platforms. To find out more about anything Torch offers or to leave us a comment about the show, then please do call 01858 438260 or email info at torchtrust.org. For now, from me, Marilyn and everyone on the Reflections team, goodbye. 
God bless and Merry Christmas. You've been listening to Reflections from Torch Trust.